come on fish you're fishing for those big fish and when you're fishing for those five plus pound fish and how he's been doing the big really bait deal but focus on gizzard chad imitation bait the largemouth bass has more than a big mouth it's fast and powerful norcal is just different we've got a different environment up here it's weird we kind of do this all four seasons the big thing about a swim bait that i've learned is it's gonna show you where they live. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know where you're throwing it, why you're throwing it. Every three feet, there's a ball of shad, there's a crawdad, there's a bluegill, a crappie, a catfish, a carp, a hitch, and the bass don't have to go far. I wanna go look for the biggest one in the lake. So whether there's trout in the lake, gizzard shad in the lake, whatever the biggest forage may be, what are they eating? Like, what is the bigger piece of food that these bass are looking for? The fish really, really just focus on eating the bigger baits. You're searching for the above average bass, the ones that only eat trout, only eat gizzard shad, only have that high protein forage. I'm not throwing it for no reason. I'm shooting for the fence because I've seen something that's telling me to do it. It's up to you to figure it out, put the time in the water and go out there and figure out what they want to do. My name is Paul Bailey. I have literally made my living throwing swim baits for probably the last 16 years. It's kind of crazy to think about it, you know, it's all I do is throw swim baits. I'm Pat Tui, and give me a swim bait, and I'm a pretty happy man. Don't get loud, folks. 18 pounds and eight ounces of bass. Patrick Tui is your Toyota Series yeah. champion on Lake Havasu. So I've been fishing tournaments for a long time. I've loved swim baits for a long time. I've learned that you have to have it on your deck, and I've learned it can hurt you, but I never really thought I could win a tournament completely solely on a swim bait, but that's what I did at Havasu, and it wasn't just because I picked it up and hucked it around. You know, I kind of named my guide company after the whole Big Bait theme with Big Bait Bailey Guide Service because I love to teach people how to throw big baits. Um, there's a whole lot to it. You don't just go out there and chuck and whine. Uh, it kind of took over my life when I started bass fishing. That's what I did. I threw swim baits. That was the first thing my brother Sean taught me how to do. Now I just roll with it in my business. You know, the, the, the guys that call me and the guys that want to come with me, they want to go throw big baits and I'm 100% okay with that because that's what I like to do. I think the big swim bait craze, it all started with just catching big ones. California had all the trout stocking programs going heavy. And that's when you see those big bass all over Southern California. Paul Bailey did the big bait posse down south, seeing what the HUD can do. Really that video is what uh, got me addicted to fishing. Right, so back in the big bait posse days when we decided to film that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't understand, honestly, what the movement thing was with swim baits. That wasn't our intention, with, or that wasn't our intention uh, with starting the big bait posse. This, this kind of whole big bait movement, it, it moved everybody like into a separate category that bass fishes. You got bass fishermen, and you've got swim bait fishermen, and it's kind of like this old cult following that we didn't see happening. You know, after the big bait posse, uh, why it happened. Everybody saw what the West Coast was pumping out on these trout baits, and then people started taking it to the East Coast, and then they're catching big ones. It was almost like the swim baits were easy because the fish hadn't seen them yet, but over the years, everything has, has evolved so much. Uh, there's so many people across the United States throwing swim baits at these bass now from every lake in the country has probably seen a swim bait now. Let me tell you right now, California is not the same as it used to be. <laughs> All of our lakes are pretty tough to get bit in, and. Uh, when you're searching for a swim bait bite, it's not like it used to be. You're not just going out there and smashing them. You're putting the pieces together. Like when someone's catching them on a swim bait nowadays on the West Coast, they, they're doing something right. Swim baits will work at every lake throughout the country, guaranteed it's when and where. You know, bass behavior and swim baits, uh, it, it showed me how aggressive they really are. Um, they could be territorial certain times of year and seeing how many big fish were in these groups got me going on, on wanting to do it year round because once you see what they do year round and, and where they do it and how they do it, it kind of just made me a lot more comfortable and, and now it's my comfort zone. Swim baits are my comfort zone for sure. I fish a lot. I like going to the lake and catching them. 
I can figure them out on crankbait, I can figure them out on jig, I can figure them out on worm. But when I get to go figure them out on swim bait and I get that first bite, that's when the light bulb goes off. Everything just got blown this way yesterday. So there's balls of coconut that just got shoved into this cup. It's, you almost like tap into this primal state where like another fish is eating another fish that you have tied onto your line, you know. And, you know you're not throwing a, a little bug, you're throwing a fish that's about to get eaten by another one. Being able to throw a 7 to 12 inch bait in front of a little green fish and trick it into eating it, I don't know why, but I think we all get a kick out of it. And to me, that's the ultimate rush. A 500, dude. I put it right on his head when I seen him fin out there. I mean, so that one, I saw his fin come out of the water. He was just eating a fly. I put that punker right on top of him and he all the way back to the boat. <laughs> you got a big punker in front of you, but you want to eat a little fly. As far as like swim baits versus traditional lures, when you're searching for that swim bait bite, all the same stuff goes into play. The matching the hatch, the colors, the speed, how slow, where you're fishing it. It's fully engaging when you're throwing a swim bait. You're seeing your bait, you're seeing the fish, you're seeing what they do to react, and, and that's what gets me. God, there's some real ones right here, Johnny. We gotta get one to bite this thing. They're all mad at each other right now. <laughs> I'm full speed for it, dude. <sighs> you punk. I'm gonna get you. Man. How hard they bite a swim bait is another reason why people are attracted to it. They bite a swim bait seems like harder than they'll bite any other bait you can throw. Got her. Zero to a hundred in a matter of a split second, and then that's why I love it. Yes, sir. <laughs> she came right out and toasted that thing, dude. Yes. They're not peck bites. You feel them down in your plumps. They lay slack in it, you hit them, and instantly you know it's something different. It's, and all you have to do is do that one time, and you want to keep feeling that feeling. It's, it's just addicting, like there's no other way to put it. Oh, God. Vegan. Giant. Yeah, doggy. gone bro. That's how you know that's a trout eater. He ate that thing like a Ned rig. They work when the bite is lights out. Okay? Lake's fire. You can do anything you want. Swim baits work then. When the lake sucks, swim baits work. When the lake is pressured out, nobody's getting bites, a lot of the times that's when I have my best swim bait days. People have this misconception that just just keep throwing it, you know, keep throwing the bait that you're throwing, and, and eventually you'll get bit with that swim bait, and and that's just not the case. You got to know your lake. You got to know what they're feeding on. You got to know what colors they react to. There's a whole plethora of of things you need to know before you go attack a certain lake. There is no set in stone. You throw this for 10 days straight, you're going to catch one. Uh, that's just not the case. You can throw a bait for 300 days straight, and you'll never catch one if it. If those bass in that lake are not looking at that as a food option. You're going after a different animal in the lake. You're, you're not searching for the average bass. I tend to like to be out there on the nastiest days I can. Rainy, windy, you know, you gotta be comfortable when you're out there in those conditions, but you gotta be out there in those conditions. Those are the when those big fish are biting. Low pressure systems, wind, rain, all those are a recipe for big fish. Each glide bait, each paddle tail, each whatever, dude. Any swim bait has their time and day, and you can catch them on any one of them when the situation is right. I think when there's a tool that needs to be to, needs to be purchased to complete a job, you need that tool in your arsenal, and that's what swim baits are, they're just tools. When you're searching for big bass, whether it's just throwing swim baits for big ones, or fishing a derby, whether it's hot, cold, windy, whatever it is, it's all the same mentality. It's get out there, put the pieces together, and go to work. The future of swim bait fishing is unknown right now. I, I, you know, I don't think it's ever going to stop evolving. It is evolving fairly slowly. And swim bait fishing is what you make of it. You know, it's up to you to figure it out, put the time in the water, and go out there and figure out what they want to do. I'm all old and washed up. 
I'm probably not gonna fish tournaments anymore, and I'll probably just go to all the cool lakes and <laughs> throw big swim baits until my arm don't work no more. I do it. I'll go two days without a bite. Don't give me that.